Well, we can go right back to the to the Buddha and, and ask what is the role of the Buddha in Buddhism. And the role of the Buddha is as a guide, as a as a teacher, not a savior, not a god, uh, but as this extraordinarily wise, resourceful, and skillful guide who showed us the way to become free from suffering and the, the causes of suffering. So if Buddha is the primary teacher then in Buddhism, the, then the teachers we meet, our personal teachers, obviously cannot be any more than guides. So any temptation to think of them as, as, as kind of savior figures uh, and, and to lavish kind of worship on them uh, is entirely inappropriate. In a sense, the, the Lama is a skilled craftsman, and we want to be learned in that craft, the craft of awakening compassion and, and wisdom. And he will impart to us, or she will impart to us, she will share with us the, the means uh, of becoming learned, becoming skilled masters ourselves. So Lama simply is a Tibetan term for guru, and in the Buddhist sense, as a guru is not a savior or a god, but this skilled craftsman um, but then one might say but Buddha taught and so his teachings are still present in the form of the scriptures they'll be enough for me well that's you know one might try that but practically speaking it doesn't seem to work so easily because precisely because one is unlearned as a beginner one doesn't know which of the Buddha's teachings and there's so many of them Buddha being such a resourceful a teacher, there's so many of them, as a beginner one doesn't know which ones to apply, where to start on this path, which are most appropriate for somebody like myself, and, uh, and how to measure whether I'm making effective progress or not. For all these reasons, we need to rely upon somebody who knows their way around the Buddhist teachings. And by the way, knowing the way around the Buddhist teachings doesn't just mean they have an intellectual faculty, an ability to kind of and uh, have the right opinions or the right kind of uh, amount of facts about Buddhism, but it it means they themselves have applied the teachings to their uh, in their own lives and developed some of those qualities, which mean that we can we can feel the the the, the actual result to at least some extent of the teachings in our teachers, and that then gives us further confidence. It means also they they. Have, have in developing some of the qualities of the teachings in themselves, the teachers have become endowed with the flexibility to respond to their students uh, 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 appropriately. So wise and, and, and learned uh, and, and compassionate teachers are very necessary, one might say, for all of us uh, setting out on the path. Now, the, the, as we progress on the path, as we hopefully progress along the path, our knowledge becomes greater, our experience becomes greater, we might in fact meet and study with a number of different teachers um, who have, are able to present different aspects of the teaching or different stages of the, of the, of the practice to us. And that's, that's fine, there's no, there's no problem about, uh, about that. Generally speaking, one or two teachers will, over the course of one's life, be the most significant ones, the ones from whom one will probably take most personal guidance. But it, it's you know the way the traditions work, that, that one usually meets not just one's direct personal teacher, but his or her teachers, and they also become part of one's, uh, you know, the, 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 the group of one's teachers. So that's how it is. Um, is the should what is the emotional attitude we should have to the teacher? Well, as we hear his teachings and test them with our intelligence, and then test them by trying by putting into practice, we develop a sense of great respect and appreciation for how he or she shares the teachings with us, and beyond that, if it's a really accomplished teacher, the way in which the the qualities of enlightenment begin to kind of it were. Irradiate, radiate through their actions as well as their, as well as their teachings. So this is the meaning of the often misunderstood concept of devotion in Buddhism. It's not devotion to a savior or a god. It's that kind of that 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 heartfelt recognition of the wonder, wonderful path that is being shared with one by the teacher. But as Sakyapanda counsels, 
if somebody with the title teacher does not teach or act in accord with the teachings of the Buddha, then we should simply ignore them. And no matter what their status or title is, they're not for us. We should look away and walk, and, and walk away. So once again, it needs a kind of intelligent appreciation of what is the purpose of the Lama um, uh, to be able to, to develop a, a, a wise and wholesome and productive relationship with, the, with, the, with one's Lama or with one's Lamas. Thank you.